And just like magic, you shall see I appear. All of a sudden, I'm here again. My name is Anthony Allen, welcome to my YouTube channel, Anthony Allen Edits, the YouTube channel that is here to help you edit so that you can tell the stories that you want to tell in the way that you would like to tell them. And here in this video, I'm going to show you how to do that disappearing effect that a lot of YouTubers have used for comedic effect, a lot like what you're seeing on screen right now. So, without further ado, I'm going to teach you how to do this in Final Cut Pro 10. But if you're not a Final Cut Pro 10 user, do not forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell because I also show you how to do these effects on other editing softwares and platforms. And it's well worth hitting the subscribe button because you do not want to miss out on anything. And the notification bell helps you not miss out on those uploads. So without further ado, let's get into Final Cut Pro 10 and I'm going to show you how to do this effect firsthand. Okay, so as you can see, we already have our clip imported and dragged into the timeline ready to start this effect. If I pull the playhead all the way to the beginning shot, the beginning frame, sorry, not the beginning shot, and press play, I'll show you what I've got already. Two, one. All of a sudden, I'm here again. Okay, so from there, you can see that I have been out of shot and then I've appeared uh, into the same frame, into the same shot. You want to keep the lighting, the frame and everything in the background consistent. You don't want to change anything from when you're there and when you're not there. If you do this, the effect won't work. So here you can see that I've kept the same lighting. I haven't changed any lighting. I'm using natural light. I come into shot and there's a shot of where I'm not there. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the frames in where I am not appearing yet. So let's say from here to roughly about there. And we want to split that away from our clip. This is going to be our bottom layer. So you want to drag this to the bottom layer. To make this effect easier for you, what you want to ideally do is do the shot in one take with you not in the shot and then with you inside of the shot. So now we've created our bottom layer clip, which is our empty background that you can see here. What we're then going to do is we're going to go to the top layer and we're going to see where I am fully appeared. So not when I'm moving into shot, we want to scrap all of that. We want us to already be in shot, which is around about this point here. You make a cut by pressing B and then clicking onto the part of the shot where you want to cut. We want to move our bottom layer clip over to the clip that we're going to keep. So now it is attached. If we zoom in there, the layer is attached to this part of the clip. Now we can delete the movement and drag this back to the beginning frame. That doesn't look odd. So at this point, we're going to do a little trick. We're actually going to go into our generators and we're just going to grab anything solid, like a solid white. A good one is iMovie. And we're going to drag iMovie just ahead of our clips just making it shorter, giving it a cut. Now at this point what we're going to do is we're going to drag our background over the top of iMovie and we want the ending finishing frames to be hanging over onto our clip where our subject is going to appear. Now one thing that can happen is that the lighting can have inconsistencies especially when you're using natural light. As you can see here the shot brightens slightly when I appear in shot. Not a lot, but to my eye, I can still see it. So what you want to do here is you want to drag iMovie across until you get the closest lighting possible. One thing that might help is zooming in on the shot. I think that's pretty pretty close. The next thing you want to do is you want to click onto the subject, highlight it, go up to modify, and you want to go to match color. And you want to click on your background. So the idea is to have the background on one screen and the subject on the other, which in this case is me in the shot. To complete the process, click apply match. You still see there's a slight light inconsistency in the highlights. 
So what we're going to do here at this point, we're just going to bring those highlights up ourselves in color grading. At this point, what you want to do is you want to find yourself a crossfade and add the crossfade to the shot. Now this is far too big of a crossfade, so you want to make this a lot smaller. You also want to copy this top layer and pull it directly underneath the beginning section of the clip. Now at this point, we want to make this iMovie section completely invisible. Let's see how it looks so far. Two, one. So you can see that I appear in shot. So as you can see, we've successfully completed the effect, but it's not quite there just yet, is it? So one thing that you can do is you can zoom in on your clips and you can make this crossfade a lot bigger. Once you've done this, making the iMovie smaller so it matches that crossfade will help. Now let's have a look how that turned out. Two, one. Wow, it's almost seamless. The longer you make the crossfade, you always match with the iMovie that is actually at zero opacity and that will drag out the effect. Two, one. Two, one. Because we've matched the colours on all layers, we can actually mess around with this effect as much as we want and dragging this iMovie along with the crossfade will make the effect faster, slower or longer or shorter in length. Now we haven't used any masking to complete this technique. Another thing that we can do just to make this effect more professional looking, for example, is to get rid of the sound audio from the first part of the clip. And the way we do that is to make sure that we can see the audio to begin with. There we have it, and we can bring those levels down. All of a I'm here again. Hopefully you really enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to make. I always find these type of effects quite fun. Really, really, really fun. Actually, it's like, <laughs> I understand why YouTubers use these effects. And it's also quite easy to do once you know how to do it. And hopefully this helps you learn how to do this effect. Love to see you in the next video, guys. I upload on this YouTube channel every single day. And I'm always here to help you. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section as well. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because as I said, said earlier in the video, I upload videos on how to edit, mainly on Final Cut Pro 10, but I also use other different platforms that are free, you can use on mobile, on iPhone and more, definitely worthwhile hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell because you do not want to miss out on when I touch on something that relates to you. So maybe you've watched this video and it doesn't relate to you because you're using a free software, don't worry, I'm coming up with more content. I upload every day, so I'm definitely going to touch upon that software sooner or later, if I haven't already ready with what you're wanting to learn so hit the subscribe button give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one here on anthony allen edits